Hello friends, you're welcome to Dreams of the Heart TV. Today we're going to be talking about how to discover your gift. Last week we talked about you have a gift and I was sharing about how every single person has a gift. The man on the street has a gift, the woman in prison has a gift, every single person has a gift. But the thing is that a lot of times we don't use it because we don't even know we have it. Today we're just going to be talking about how we can discover what that gift is. And I'm going to be sharing about three ways in which we can find out what our gift is. The word discover I found from the dictionary means to uncover or to reveal. Discover means to find out a thing, you know, to get knowledge about a thing. So when you talk about discover your gift, it means... How do I find out what my gift is? How do I reveal? How does my how do I reveal? How does it come into the open what my gift is? That's what it means to discover your gift. And Proverbs 18 verse 6 says, A gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great men. Your gift is able to do wonders, like I shared in my book, Discover, Develop and Deploy Your Gift. That gift is able to do wonders in your life, is able to do wonders for your generation, only if you use that gift. So that's my challenge to you today. How do you discover what that gift is? So the three ways we're going to be talking about is, the first one is um, you need to seek God to find out what your gift is. The same way, this, like we said, discovery is, re, is revelation. It's revealing what your gift is. You can, and a, a good example would be when a woman gets pregnant. When a woman gets pregnant, she's excited. She's discovering that she's going to have a baby. She is overjoyed. She's ecstatic. If it's twins, then she's even, even more excited. It's like, oh, I'm going to have babies. You know, she gets so excited. The same way when you discover what your gift is, you, there's just this joy within you that it goes beyond you. You're not just affecting yourself, but now you're going to be affecting other people's lives. You're going to be able to help other people. You're going to be able to do things that you might not have been able to do. This is what discovering your gift does to you. And the first way I would say you can discover your gift is by seeking God for it. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know of. Only a manufacturer can tell you the use of a thing. If you buy a DVD player, for example, it comes with a manual. If you want to know the full use of that DVD player, you have to read the manual. When you read the manual, what does it do? It tells you exactly what that DVD would do. It shows you all the buttons. It tells you what to push, what to, you know, to push. To play, you have to push this button. To record, you have to push this button. The same way, if you want to discover what exactly your gift are, you go back to the manufacturer of your gift and this is God. He is the one that manufactured you as a person. He knows exactly what gifts you have on the inside of you. When you go to him, what does he do? He would be able to reveal to you, okay, this is what you have and this is what you can do with it. And I love this, this way of seeking because it's just a time that you set aside and say, God, I just want to find out what are my gifts? What do I love to do? And I shared in one of my earlier videos how I discovered what I love to do. I went back and I said, God, what do you want me to do in this season of my life? And he said, you used to love to write. And that's how my love for writing came back. And I started writing again. And I love to talk. So speaking is another gift that I have, that I love to use. That would be my story. What about you? What is that gift that you need to discover? Another way you can discover your gift is, I call it thinking time. Thinking time is called imagination time. I learned this about this technique from a lady I love to listen to. Her name is Terry Savelle Foy. She has really inspired me. She's one of my mentors. And I have, you know, watched her through the years. And I learned about this from her. Thinking time is just a time that you schedule, whereby you sit away from everything. You take away time. It's solitude time, whereby you sit by yourself, in, you choose a time, you choose a place. It could be somewhere in your room, it could be away from your house, it could be at the park. It's just a period of time that you set aside to just focus and you meditate. And you just say, God, I just want you to speak to me about things regarding my future. There's a, I shared um, some quotes in my book, Discover, Develop and Deploy Your Gifts. 
about thinking time, there's a man who says this, Albert Einstein, he had a thinking chair. He used to think in a special chair he called his thinking chair. John Maxwell had this quote, thinking precedes achievement. Whatever you want to do in life, you have to take time to think. When you sit down and you think, what happens? Ideas begin to drop in your spirit. Ideas begin to come to you. And as you, as you sit down, you begin to write those ideas down. You know, successful people invest time to think about their future. If you don't invest time to sit down, a lot of time we have to learn to come away from busyness. A lot of time we're just, you know, going about being busy, doing things. And in the midst of those business, you can't really focus. You can't really think. But when you set aside time to sit down and say, you know what, I'm just going to, I just want to find out what's going on in this period of time in my life. I just want to find out what, what, what is my next step in this project that I'm doing. What do I need to do? When you seek time to just think, then you begin to realize, revelations begin to come to you. A man called Henry Ford said, thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason only few people engage in it. A lot of people don't want to spend time thinking. Terry Savelle Foy said this, the greater your thinking, the greater your achievements. And there's a man called Peter J. Daniels, he is a Christian businessman. He, is a, he, he was a man that came from a disadvantaged background. He was illiterate in his early years. He was a man that he couldn't read. You know, he was just disadvantaged. Mentally, he said he was disadvantaged. But when, after he met Christ in 1959, his life was changed around. He began to believe he was created to be somebody. He was a man that scheduled time to think. He was a man that reserved one day a week to think. On his calendar, he had a special thinking day. And one thing he said, he said all his ideas, all his opportunities and his money-making ventures started with the days he spent thinking. How powerful is that? He spent one day a week just saying, you know what, I'm going to take out this time. I'm just going to spend time thinking. I want to embark on this project, but I'm not just going to rush into this project. I want to spend time thinking. I want to spend time asking God, what do I need to do? Reveal to me what are the things I need to do. You know what thinking does to you? Thinking gives you direction to achieve what God has put in your heart to do. That's what thinking does to you. You know, we sometimes believe, oh, we, we are too busy to engage in an activity. First of all, we need to just set time to think. Don't just rush into things. Learn to set time to think. And there's a lovely quote that I love that Terry Savelle normally sh shares. She says, some people say to you, do something. I say, don't just do something. Sit there and think. You know, when you sit, the greatest thing I've found about thinking time for me is when you sit there to think, instructions come. And then when you think, what happens? You begin to act on those instructions as they're given to you. Thinking time is a time that you can imagine it's a time to meditate upon your life. It's a time to meditate upon the things that you've received. It's a time to just create possibilities. Thinking time is a time that you're, you're free to just imagine beyond the ordinary. And as you practice being quiet, what happens? Instructions come, like I said, and you act upon them. There is a verse I want to share with you. It's from Psalm 46, verse 10a, from the Message Bible. It says, step out of the traffic. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God. Step out of the traffic. There is something about traffic. Traffic is busy. It's just life going on. It's just things going on. But when we take time to step out of the traffic and just take time away, in solitude, what happens? We're able to hear better. It might be a challenge to you today. What is it that you've been saying? Oh, I need to do this. I need to achieve this. Oh, it's 2017. We're already in the month of July. And there's so many things I still need to achieve. Why don't you spend some time to just pull away from everything? Maybe take a, make, maybe take a couple of hours. Maybe schedule one. I'm going to schedule one, one hour a week. To just sit in my guest bedroom and just think. I'm just going to schedule maybe one day a week to just go away to a place that is just quiet and I'm just going to spend time to think. That's a challenge to you. So first way I said to discover is seek God, you know, to find out what those gifts are. 
another thing is schedule time to think and imagine the third thing i would say is ask questions that's a big thing ask questions and one thing i forgot to mention while you're in your thinking time it's not just good to just sit there and think always have a journal you should have a you should have a journal there's something called that i call a dream book you can you should have a dream book a dream book you could also call a journal it's a book that you have that you take into your thinking corner or your thinking room i remember when i started to ask questions about what am i about two years ago what am i meant to do in this is not my life i had i had i had a book that i have kept with me it's called a thinking you know it's called a dream book and in my dream book i write things that god speaks to me in my quiet time i write when I have ideas, even when I'm walking, I write it on a piece of paper and I just keep it with me. Everywhere I go, I keep it. When an idea comes to me, I write it down, I put it in my dream book. And I have kept that because there are dreams that would come, there are things that would come to you that if you don't write it down quickly, you tend to forget. So make sure you have a dream book. And those dream books are ideas that you write down and then eventually you transfer them onto your dream board. And that focuses on things that you want to do. You transfer them onto your dream board. And you can keep them with you so the third thing we will talk about is ask questions you need to ask questions you need to ask yourself what questions what do i love to do you know ask questions ask people such questions i've i've written are what skills what talents do i have what am i good or what am i best at doing what skills do i have that i need to develop to impact my world what do i get excited about what am i passionate about do I love to make people laugh? Do I have a strong attention to detail? Am I a good communicator? What can I do that I cannot fail at? What issues grieve me when I see them or hear about them? Am I a creative person? What do I like to spend time to do? What do I like to make with my hands? When I have free time, what, how do I spend it? What are my hobbies? Do I, love, do I love numbers? Do I love to organize things? There are so many questions that you can ask. These are some of the ways that you can discover the gift that is in you. This is found from my book, Discover, Develop, and Deploy Your Gifts. You can get one for yourself so you can further find out what I've been discussing today. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share with other people that it can encourage, subscribe, and stay tuned.